All right, you might not be the tallest person in the world, but that does not mean that you cannot be good on the rowing machine. Too many people discount themselves for not being tall, and they think that height is the only thing that matters when it comes to rowing, and that is absolutely not true. The best rowers are the people who are able to become technicians, meaning you learn how to move your body better through space and time, and that is what it is all about. So let's explore how you, as a height-challenged person, can still succeed on the rowing machine despite what others might have told you. And welcome, I'm Shane Farmer, this is Dark Horse Rowing, where you build the life that you want to live, and we just happen to use rowing to get you there. All right, so when it comes down to the argument of height, you've probably heard or seen rowers, and they are very tall. But that's not your story, because number one, we can't make you taller. No matter how much I wish I could just like <laughs> sprinkle some height on you from here, we can't do that. What instead we need to be able to do is talk about how do we make you most effective on the rowing machine. Then we can start to embrace a couple of the other factors that are necessary to perform well on this machine. So let's talk about what those factors are. One of the things that's most important on the rowing machine is that your stroke is effectively as long as it can be. Now, what do I mean by effectively? Well, we can make our stroke long, both at the front and the back end, meaning I can add length on the front and the back of the stroke. But length is only good if it's good length. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you're just getting length at all costs, meaning you're not in the right positions, your body is soft and not prepared to be able to take the stroke or you're laying back too far, we, we move outside of the bounds of good position, and what happens at those extremes is that your body is no longer applying force to the machine. It doesn't mean that your splits are gonna get any lower, meaning you're not gonna go any faster. It just means you're wasting energy for the sake of wasting energy. So let's learn how to be in the right positions. Let's learn how to actively and effectively apply force through the stroke. All strokes are not created equal. If I can teach you to push through the legs, then swing your hips open, then snap the arms in sequence, well, now you have increased that effective length on the stroke and shown the machine that you're going to accelerate the force as opposed to just like all at once. That all at once stroke is not an effective way of putting force into the machine. So that's number one. This is something that mentally and emotionally has to come from within you. Being able to commit to something and sticking with it is one of the hardest things to do when you are in physical discomfort. Can you embrace suck factor in everyday life? Because if you can, well, that means that you can persevere and you are resilient. And that resilience is something that rowing teaches. And that's why many people end up on this machine is because life isn't perfect. Life isn't linear. We get these big bumps, uh, these, these peaks and troughs, whether you lose your job or whether you're getting a promotion, those are peaks and troughs. Your ability to handle that and stay level is your resilience. By embracing suck factor, by being willing to go through it and challenge yourself, well, you're in a good place to be able to thrive on the rowing machine. So height or not, you can still do well. If I hate discomfort, you love it. While we're next to each other on the machine, if you can make it a lot harder for me by starting to push the throttle, I might crumble because I don't want to go that far. And you have the ability to do that. Capacity is essentially your ability for your lungs and your heart to work together to make sure that you can keep oxygen moving through your body when it's needed. It's your ability to continue on so that you don't reach a point of essentially burnout where you just can't produce enough oxygen for your body anymore or your heart starts beating so hard that you just can't handle it and you stop. Capacity is trained over time and through a variety of workouts. You challenge yourself in a number of different ways. You do that for long enough and your general capacity levels begin to rise on all fronts from both the short, powerful work to the long endurance work. So regardless of your height, if you can improve capacity, that means that you have the ability to work harder or longer or both together and that begins to level the playing field. How long do you want to go? Yeah, sure, let's do it because I know that I can thrive, whereas I might be able to break you on your capacity front. I might be able to ramp you up so high that you can't handle it anymore. And that's where capacity comes into play. Let's talk about improving effective length on the machine. But first, I just want to make a note because I feel like this question is going to come through. What about drag factor? Is there a better drag factor that I can use 
to help me level the playing field. Well, no, there is not a, a, a drag factor or a, a damper setting that's going to make it easier for you. All that matters is that you find the damper setting that works best for you because that's what damper setting is. And also don't just throw it up to 10 because you think you're strong. You could be super strong and be very finessed on the machine, in which case a damper setting of 10 would be horrible for you because it just forces you to grind yourself down as opposed to being able to finesse and be explosive and light on the machine. Length is only good if it's good length. And there are two places in the stroke where you can increase actual length. And that would be the catch, that's the front of the stroke, or the release. Now, the general pattern that you wanna think about of your trunk is what will determine your length at the front and the back. And what we're looking for is an 11 to one swing pattern. So from 11 o'clock to one o'clock, that's where you want your trunk to swing. The reason we don't wanna move outside of that and we begin to lose effective length is because for me to get any longer here, I have to do it in a couple ways. I could perhaps push my butt back in which now I've put my body, instead of at one o'clock, I'm now at about two o'clock or maybe even a little bit past. The other thing as well is I'm now stretching my erectors and giving up good tension on my back. And tension is what helps us apply force to the machine. So without tension, I don't have the ability to actually put work into the machine, which means as soon as I get into this position, I'm not gonna be strong or effective anymore. And that's why putting yourself into a good position, which I've addressed this in many videos before, but we create the checklist for a perfect catch. That would be hands are relaxed, elbows are straight, shoulders are reaching, and then drop down. Head and neck are relaxed, back is nice and neutral. I'm braced through my midline, ha! Right, like pushing out into the sides here. My hips are behind my shoulders. My knees are tracking underneath my arms, not outside. And from there, I try to compress as much as possible. And yes, it's tight. Yes, it's uncomfortable. That's what makes a good catch. So if you aren't feeling those things, well, then we need to be working on the catch position. So that's the catch. Now at the release, from this position, if I start laying back, and I would challenge you to actually do this with me, if you bring yourself to the back of the stroke and you start laying back, at a certain point, you're just doing work holding yourself here. Not to mention that that far end of the stroke with the handle, you're not giving or feeding the monitor anything really because at that point, you don't have the same explosive strength that you do when you're coiled like a spring. That spring is basically unloaded already. And so by tacking on more distance at the back, now you're just working to move yourself back, but not giving anything to the machine, if that makes any sense. Which is why you never want to take a stroke here or even here. Cut it off at that 11 o'clock and you make a much more effective back end. So how do we lengthen them? Well, number one, that back end really can't be lengthened effectively any further than you are tall. So just learn to iron out that perfect release position. The catch, however, we want to try and get more compression out of the legs, keeping the body in the right position, not changing the body position here. And that's where it gets tough. So things that can help with that, improving ankle mobility, improving calf mobility, as well as posterior chain mobility, your back's flexibility. So working on those things can help you to get deeper into the catch. Now, if you have a belly that gets in the way, you may find that parting your knees slightly gives you a little bit more comfort, but I never want somebody to be parting their legs out here to get deeper length into the catch. This is not a good push position with the legs because to really push well, the knees have to come in anyways and then push. And so again, wasting energy, not applying it to the monitor. Now finally, let's talk about how we move through the stroke. And this comes down to the fundamentals of rowing. It's really, really critical, especially when you're shorter, that you be able to do this perfectly. The, the best rowers are technicians. They, they get very comfortable and familiar with how to execute perfect technique all the time consistently. So if you're short, that's you, become a technician. It's really important you learn, number one, how do I brace from here? And I always use this laugh, ha, right? If you can do that, dig your thumbs into the soft tissue underneath your rib cage and then laugh, ha. Now practice doing that over and over and over and that's the bracing that you need when you go to push because that solidifies your core and that gives you the ability to connect to the handle. So the first thing we do, we brace, ha. 
It's a long push of the legs. And now what you need to think about is again, it's the longest push you can have with your legs. Do not let the body open. This is the biggest issue that I see for shorter people on the machine is they try to lean into the handle. But notice what's happened. My legs haven't worked yet. And what I've done is I've unloaded my posterior chain, which is responsible for bracing me. So if your first movement is here, I've already taken my legs out of the equation and we're trying to make you as effective as possible. Push the entire foot through the machine so that your butt works, your quads work, your calves work, your whole leg is pushing the machine away from you and I still haven't opened my trunk because that doesn't happen until the knees are about to extend. Right as the knees are about to extend, then swing the hips to that 11 o'clock position and right as the body's about to get to 11 o'clock, I relay that into the snap of the arms. That, my friends, is how you make yourself effectively long on the machine. The, the icing on the cake of that is if you can think about, once the handle starts moving, you accelerate all the way through the release position. The handle should never stop accelerating. You're constantly picking up speed as you move through the stroke. <sighs> Meaning, you don't hear the flywheel start to slow down until after the hands begin to move back. Being able to do that is going to create effective length and is going to make you faster. You're giving all the right signals to the monitor. And when you're giving the right signals to the monitor, increasing acceleration, force, and distance, when you maximize those three, you create more area under the force curve. And so you feed it better signals, it's gonna give you better speed in return. Being able to relay that is one of the most critical things that you can do when you're searching to make yourself better as a short person on this machine, become the technician, make yourself effectively long, improve your grit or your resilience, right? By embracing the suck factor and then spending more time on the machine because that's going to improve your capacity, which in turn is going to allow you to handle greater intensity on this machine, which is going to make you rise becoming the best athlete you can be on this machine. If you got a ton of value out of this and you know that you're gonna need more because you wanna get better here, hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it. And then while you're at it, you might wanna check out our beginner playlist because I take you through workouts in which I'm going to teach you with drill work along the way. That's gonna be super valuable for you to help you learn how to improve that effective length.